Hello, I'm Marjorie Hash, and I'm delighted to bring you your weekly dose of music news here on France 24. My guest this week has a career that has spanned over three decades and taken him from the cool cellars of Pigalle to stadium tours across France and the world. He got his big break with his band at FFF and was notably a longtime close collaborator to French superstar and legend Johnny Halliday. He's also composed numerous soundtracks and produced a number of exciting up and coming French bands. And this year, is proving to already be super exciting on the solo front as he's just published an autobiography and released a solo album. Yarol Pupo, thank you so much for joining us here on the Thanks Fox to you. show. Um, now, uh, we've got a lot of exciting things to talk about, but first up, uh, there's a very famous quote from John Lennon, which I think he made in the 60s and 70s, which said that uh, French rock was like English wine. Now, <laughs> not very flattering a comment, but as someone who straddles both a super commercial uh, French rock music and more indie stuff where would you say this stands nowadays in 2000 you know, I was I mixed my first album in London and I went to this extraordinary restaurant and I had a amazing English wine mm -hmm. so things change yeah you know now English wine is getting better mm -hmm. and I hope too bad for John Lennon he cannot listen to what is happening in France now but I think really maybe not it, it's starting to change for rock music, but for the last maybe two decades, mm -hmm. French music has been really successful around the world, you know, ex especially with, for, with like electronic artists or indie bands like Phoenix, you know, or Justice, these guys. And I think it's really good because now when you go somewhere else in another country and you say you're a French musician, when I was a kid, when I started, French musician, French rock star with rocker was like, oh, <laughs> and now you're... It's more serious. Yeah. And uh, you sing, in, amongst others, in French. Do you think that's a, a, an extra barrier or are people more open to different languages? No, I think it's open to different languages. I, I think in French and in English, mm -hmm. because most of the music I ever listened to when I was a kid and what, what bit my musical culture was in English, you know. Um, but I think it's really interesting to sing in French. And I think even from, a, a, um, like, somebody from another country point of view it's interesting to listen to some rock in French you know because uh, it sounds different and it's a different way of um, expressing and, and melodic you know it's a bit pretty different so yeah it's interesting no and you've just like um, released your second solo album Hot Like Dynamite and I read that it was mostly composed in the countryside mm -hmm. uh, what kind of mood were you in when you were making it you're always in the same kind of mood when you make an album I mean for me Mostly when I when I write and when I record, I like to be like cast away, like somewhere where I only have to think about the music, and not to going to get my kid at the school or do the go to the grocery or, you know. So yes, we took this house in the countryside, and um, but we did it in several several different moments, like two weeks of hard work, then take a break, then come back for ten days, then take a break, then come back, you know, more than being cast away for two yeah. months. Uh -huh. So um, yes, it's a good, um, good way of being really deep into your music and doing nothing else. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but for mixing, we did in Paris. We did the mix in Paris because I wanted to get the urban energy the back into touch. the music and yeah, and being more like, uh, you know, in my everyday life when mixing. Well, how about we check out one of the tracks, Crocodile. <laughs> C'est dans l'ombre blanche, laisse un trou dans ta peau Comme une langue qui s'attire Elle te laisse vivre Dans la nuit tes yeux vides Crocodile track you can find on Yarrow Pupo's new record. Uh, if you listen to the whole track, actually, I found that there was a bit of a, a Led Zeppelin, uh, you know, cashmere tint to it. Really? Yeah, there's a little quote here. Yeah, I found a little head nod. It's very good. You know, mu music is always yeah. quotes about, you know, you, you, you only what you, you listen to and what made you a musician. So sometimes it comes out. Yeah, you can, so, so it's, a, it's a reference and a homage. Um, <laughs> I can imagine that you're really super psyched about taking this album to On The Road and is there any hope? Because obviously a lot of people are putting it to like a new. We have we have one. The, we have a concert in Paris on November the seventeenth. 
in a place called La Maroquinerie. November lovely. 17th. But we have a few gigs this summer. Yes, like small things in a, you know, a small like uh, a, a little festival or a friend of mine has a restaurant and has a terrace. So we're so excited to play. So we say yes to anything. Mm -hmm. So we're going to play. I don't know. We're going to pack the, 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 the gear into the van and take the road and we'll see you. Hey, guys, can we play? Yeah, everyone wants to just get out and, <laughs> and see things, like bring on those vaccinations. Um, you've also just released a biography, uh, which for now is only in French. Uh, however, it's quite an exciting, you seem to have had quite an exciting life from having uh, Isabella Gianni as your babysitter uh, <laughs> to picking up your first guitar uh, in the house of author Marguerite Duras. Right. And uh, also, I believe you've encountered the likes of uh, Chuck Berry. Um, who's been your most awe-inspiring encounter, you would say? The person when you met them and you were like, it's changed your life forever. Oh, pff, many, but maybe my mom. My mom was really important in my way of uh, discovering music and helping me to, 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 to believe in it and to be really concentrated on, on getting the ability to, to be a, a, a musician and thinking that it's, it's a serious job, you know? She was it's not artist. like many, many parents would be like, okay, you play your guitar, but now you have to go to school to, to learn a real job. Yeah. And for my mom, it was... A real job, but in the way that, okay, you want to be a musician, you got to work hard, you got to practice, you got to, okay, that's not something you're going to do only. Uh, yeah, because she was an artist herself. She was, uh, yeah, a producer, and um, she studied as a, a model in the 60s, and then she became a press agent for indie movies and uh, like in cinema. Yeah. Well, very quickly, can you tell us, because I suppose you've got so many, but any co dream collaborations you have, because you've collaborated with some of the greatest so who would you also like to do? the do? greatest um, <laughs> Yeah, many many bands. Yes, I I'd love to 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 work, for example, with uh, with Jack White. You know, uh, of course there are many artists I'd love to work with. Uh, play guitar with uh, Bruce Springsteen, for example, in a stadium tour. <laughs> yeah, notes a few nods to him in your record as well. I think. <laughs> well, how about we check out some other music news that's out uh, this week? And we're going to head to Niger first, where Mamadou Suleiman, better known as M. Du Mokhtar, is this week releasing a new album called Afrique Victime, which blends traditional Touareg music and hard rock. His new uh, Saharan-filled offering touches on topics like love, religion, women's rights and colonial exploitation. Let's take a look at the lead single. One of this week's exciting new releases. Now, uh, Yahul, you've worked with some incredible African artists, notably yes. DRC's Jupiter Oques, whose uh, recent album is actually one of my favorites of this year. You, you collaborated on one of the tracks on this, this recent album. So when I found out you were coming on the show, I was like, well, I need to ask him about it. How did you guys meet? I met these guys back in 2004 because of friends of mine, uh, two uh, French uh, cineasts, they directed a movie in Kinshasa about these guys in 2004 and so they called me y'all we're in Kinshasa we met these guys they're amazing we're making a movie about them we need you to come and record their music in a studio in Kinshasa okay no problem send me a ticket and I yeah I'll be there so I spent like 10 days with these guys working on their what would become their first album I mean it was the first time they, they were getting into a, a recording studio and uh, I really had a a flash on, on their music. I, I loved it. And so inventive, so, so original, so, so groovy. And so we stayed very good friends. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jupiter has been... Um, I invited him on my first album. We did a duet, my first album, on a song called Sal. And then uh, he called me to play on his album. I mean, they're good friends, so we... So it's normal collaboration. Yeah, yeah. You have to look at this video I did in Kinshasa for this song with uh, Jupiter. Excellent. We'll try, and Sal. Put, Sal. we'll try and put a link on the, on the website when we put this uh, yes. show up. Uh, how about we move over now to British new wave legend and electronic music pioneer Gary Newman, who's releasing a new album called Intruder. Now, it's inspired by the terrible impact of man-made climate change. Uh, from our planet's perspective, let's take a look. Well, I can listen to you scream Pretty music to my I could listen to it all day If you want me to 
too I could talk about my world How you brought about ruin I could talk about your dream If you want me to a very apocalyptic vibe there in that video. Yahoo Pupu, thank you so much for coming on the Encore Show. I'm just going to remind people that uh, your new album, Hot Like Dynamite, is out. And you've also got, for those of you who read French, an autobiography, which is well worth a read. Um, we are going to finish up the show because the news is coming up in just a few minutes. So, But we've got enough time to uh, enjoy some glamour, some glitz that's all the way in Rotterdam and it's happening this week. It's the Eurovision Song Contest. Now, France last won it in 1977 and this week, representing our, our wonderful country, we have Barbara Pravi, and uh, she's apparently uh, hotly tipped as a contestant. I've looked at, you know, other countries' views and who's mm -hmm. going to make it. Well, how about we check her out? Let's Let, check. Let's go.